Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm Ken Highland, and um, I'm delighted to be invited to speak at the conference. I'm just sorry that I can't um, be there because of the restrictions on travel at the moment. But um, thank you for coming to this presentation, and thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Um, I'm going to talk about feedback. Let me try and share my screen. Okay, so feedback is a hot topic because it's a powerful influence on learning. Research says it ranks just below good teaching and students' natural intelligence in its impact on learning. So feedback can support learners by encouraging disciplinary understandings, um, intellectual development and writing improvement. It gives them a sense of what an audience values in writing, contributing to uh, their understanding of disciplinary subject matter and argument patterns. But does it work? Um, large scale surveys in the UK, Australia and Hong Kong show uh, a certain amount of student dissatisfaction and frustration with feedback. In our own field of English language teaching, debates seem to be stuck in inconclusive debates about the value of error correction and students' revision uh, of current texts. But at university, students are not in EAP courses to learn to write or even to write in some vaguely academic way. They're learning to write for purposes outside the English class. The writing that matters to them occurs in their subject in their subject disciplines. But research is largely focused on uh, writing um, classrooms and the feedback given by writing teachers. I want to look beyond the English class in this talk to the demands made um, by disciplinary writing on second language students by exploring what writing means to faculty teachers and to EFL students. I hope that a better understanding of disciplinary teachers' intentions in setting assignments and giving feedback um, and how students understand this feedback can widen our ideas about writing, improve our feedback, and um, help our students to succeed. First of all, though, um, a, writing, uh, a word about writing in the disciplines. <clears throat> While students mainly write essays in their English classes, they do many different kinds of writing um, outside uh, English. A large-scale corpus study by Nessie and Gardner a few years ago, looking at um, writing assignments in 30 UK universities, found 13 different genre families, which differ in their social purpose, their gene generic staging, and the networks that they form with other genres. So students do many different kinds of writing depending on their discipline. And this diversity can present huge challenges to students if, they own, if they're only taught to write um, essays. There's an important distinction to be made here that um, uh, uh, Machon made a few years ago between learning to write, where students are learning to express themselves in writing, and writing to learn, where they're writing to develop their expertise in the content of a discipline. So writing to learn sees writing as a tool for learning. Um, a, a learning disciplinary content and the right way to talk about that content. So this tells us that learners have to think their way into their disciplines through writing. So professors initiate students into these styles of thinking by setting particular writing assignments, which is why the assignments are different. 
Now, my study that I'm going to talk about looks at the attitudes to writing and feedback um, by 20 academics from four faculties um, <clears throat> consisting of eight disciplines at Hong Kong University. Half the teachers were L1, uh, were Cantonese first language speakers, and the rest were native English speakers. We also interviewed 24 students from the same disciplines to see how they understood uh, the feedback that they got. Just a brief uh, word about context. Hong Kong University is an English medium university where most students have Putonghua or Guangdonghua as a first language. Most attended Chinese medium uh, schools and achieved middle to good um, levels of proficiency in English. <clears throat> so first of all, why do teachers, faculty teachers set writing assignments? Well, all teachers set writing assignments, um, mainly for assessment and often as the only form assess of assessment. But this isn't just a measure of quality control, but of developing skills of disciplinary argument. Several interviewees saw writing as a key part of disciplinary learning. So this history professor, for example, said writing is absolutely key. It embodies the discipline the main discipline product. Teaching history is about teaching students to write. What I expect them to gain, ultimately, as well as the ability to express themselves, is the ability to engage effectively in the discourses of the past. You can't do that unless you can express yourself precisely what the discourse means. And by, <clears throat> sorry, a business professor said, I think writing is very important. It reflects the ways that students structure and express their thoughts. So I'm less concerned about correct spelling and grammar. What I'm very concerned about is teaching them to write logical essays, which take a research question and address it in a structured and thoughtful way with evidence and logical conclusions. So this concern with the features of disciplinary argument rather than grammatical accuracy, and which in fact reflects um, current approaches to academic writing instruction um, around the world. Now for teachers in the sciences, writing was less important. And the fact that students were writing a second language was often treated as a minor issue. This engineering professor said, if they had problems with their writing, if they had problems with language errors, that means they're not working hard enough. They're 21 years old. I mean, they should have a high level of ability already. When I assess their writing, I treat everybody equally. So grade grammar less, a very small percentage, maybe 5%. So instead of blaming their second language backgrounds, tutors were more likely to refer to their lack of experience in the genres that they were being asked to write. And this was typically attributed to the school system. So a biology teacher said, when students come in, organizing and making a clear argument is pretty weak. Most of them haven't experienced writing or reading reports when they're in high school and a teacher of English literature, it has nothing to do with not speaking English as a first language. My American students also have trouble. We're just asking them to write in a way they haven't seen before. So tutors expect students to learn the conventions of the discipline along with the uh, conventions of writing. So what do they give feedback on? Well, faculty members saw that um, language is not just grammar, but carries disciplinary meanings. The way a student expresses his or her ideas is inseparable, really, from the ideas themselves. So faculty in the humanities and social sciences offer more explicit commentary on language. So this is from uh, 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 was feedback from a history professor. My edit here is a classic example of the clarity that can be achieved if you uh, adopt a subject verb object sentence structure. Check your original and see how this expresses your meaning more clearly. 
um, feedback on a business text uh, from a business professor, avoid long sentences. Before you have control over sentence structure, use a single sentence for each point. This will allow readers to see your argument better. So um, an English teacher might write feedback like this. Comments tended to focus on disciplinary argument then, rather than correct grammar. This is from an English professor. I suppose my feedback focuses on trying to help them clearly state a claim or idea, and then how to, they can develop it in an appropriate style. So it's about encouraging clear thought and clearly defining a question. And a biology teacher. I give feedback for two things. First, to make them think about their experiment. Second, to get them to write in a proper manner. Primarily, I'm dealing with the science, but I'm also trying to deal with their English. So presenting ideas logically in ways approved by the discipline was a common thread throughout all these interviews. Succinctness and getting to the point were often mentioned um, in this regard. So an economics professor, content is important, of course, but I want them to get to the point. What do they want to say? What's the key thing? You know, you write for a reason, not because you want to fill up 10 pages. So feedback, whether focused on argument, language or content, has a clear goal for many of these tutors, which are different really from EAP classes. It's feedback which encourages learners to, to think in the right way. So what kind of feedback do they give? Well, tutors in arts and business um, said that they often spend up to an hour for each paper and that they often followed up with uh, written comments uh, in, and tutorials. So an English professor says, I write comments on their papers and then take examples to put up on the visualizer in the lecture. Then I show them examples of good and bad ones. We talk about the organization and writing. The students seem to like this and we get plenty of questions. Similarly, an economics professor said, if they ask for feedback, I ask them to come and see me because I can sit down and ask them what they think. It's easier to explain things verbally and talk about the piece of work. So these tutors then recognize really the, that their feedback might be more effective if, they, if it involved face-to-face uh, -face interaction. And this kind of, of dialogic interaction is familiar to writing teachers as scaffolding. And it can help students develop both a text and their writing skills beyond the next text. Several students also, several tutors, sorry, also said that they organize peer response groups to reduce their marking load and to give students extra learning experiences. So this business studies tutor said, um, this year students are giving feedback to each other. I created a class blog and the writing assignment was that they had to write a post each week responding to the group member who wrote the essay. So everyone wrote a paper and got nine responses from it from their classmates. Hmm, seems a good idea. Uh, a history professor said, I asked them to do peer reading because by critiquing other people's work helps them to critique their own. It's always easier to see problems in others' work and hopefully they learn to read their own work in a more critical way. Now, in contrast to these, these, these feedback angels, other tutors required no drafts and gave no feedback. An engineer said, actually, I don't ask for a draft. Their report is an assignment and they're graded on this. If we give them a chance to write a draft, if we correct a draft, we're just giving a grade to our own work. We don't write their exams for them, so why write their reports? Interesting perspective. Um, in many science courses, there's no system for giving feedback. In fact, uh, science tutors often delegated uh, feedback to their um, PhD graduate 
uh, teaching assistants. So this biology uh, professor said, students have access to postgraduate demonstrators. I think it's the students' initiative whether they use them. And it's obviously they're the ones that do much better. And a chemistry teacher, they go to the postgraduates first and then to me if necessary. If the students send them their drafts, then the demonstrator will give them feedback. But it isn't compulsory. It's up to them. So a problem here, though, is that these teaching assistants are often Chinese graduate system, uh, uh, students whose grasp of um, academic English is often no better than the uh, undergraduate students themselves. They're still learning to write uh, in the discipline themselves. So do faculty value feedback? Now, for some in the sciences, setting um, feedback assigns, assignments was a way of seeing if students had understood the course. It, it was, it's an assessment. Feedback had very doubtful significance in this uh, context. Uh, a biologist said, it's not very helpful, feedback, um, especially if it's approaching the end of the course. They care about the grade. So when something is done, they don't care. They don't care about it anymore. They just forget they ever did it. Um, and an engineer said, I don't think it makes a lot of difference, to be honest. It all depends on the students. Some students will come and talk about it and revise. Others don't seem to care. I guess if the students thought it was helpful, more of them would ask for feedback. So interestingly, the um, science assignments contained much less feedback than those in, uh, given by the arts and uh, social science tutors. And they often just contained a question mark, a tick, and a grade. So these texts seem to be hurriedly checked rather than carefully read. Several respondents <clears throat> did see, however, uh, or didn't see that improving students' disciplinary literacy was really their job. This is another engineering professor. How helpful is the written feedback for improving students' um, work? I've no idea. I don't teach them how to write. They go to academic writing classes, I think, and should, uh, and should learn about writing from the readings we give them. I don't think my feedback would help them to write. Even where feedback is seen as important, many mentioned time was in short supply. This is a business uh, professor. I don't think many teachers give feedback, not because they don't want to, but they're just overworked. We have a huge teacher-student ratio, and we just can't give quality feedback to every single student in a class of 200, you know. So feedback also involves compromises with other demands um, on their time. And this uh, historian summed this up quite well. We shouldn't fool ourselves. This is a research university where the expectations are clear. Research is at the top. Teaching is number two, and administration number three. Some of us feel that administrative work is number two, and teaching is at the very bottom. We don't have much time to help students as we would like. So there are clear differences and contradictions among staff with those in the arts and social sciences being more positive about feedback, but often lacking the time to do it effectively. Now, turning to the students, um, these these student these teacher attitudes influence uh, the the feedback they give or or don't give, and so affect how students uh, see their field of study, see their progress, and see themselves as learners. It's important to say that feedback carries meanings that are ac ac accidentally communicated. Um, this is what Goffman calls information given off rather than given. It's accidental, but it's real in its effects. So in this second part of the talk, I'm interested in how students 
interpreted their feedback rather than how it is intended. So here we interviewed um, 24 undergraduates, six from each of the same four faculties. 22 were local students and uh, two were mainland Chinese students. Now, most students believe in these interviews that feedback can help them in their studies, but they saw that it varied enormously between teachers. And we can identify five broad themes in the messages uh, that they gave me. First of all, is the importance of accuracy. Now, Hong Kong students arrive at university with ideas about the importance of accuracy in writing, shaped by years of schooling. School gives them a good grammatical knowledge, but it also means they see writing as the application of rules rather than the creation of meanings. So the feedback they get from their English teachers reinforces the importance of good language. This uh, history student said, I like my writing to be grammatically accurate. So if she tells me something new about my grammar, maybe I'm making the same mistake all the time. It means I can get rid of it because it's really bad to make a mistake and not know it's a mistake. Many students, however, found that their subject tutors focus on what they've written about rather than the way they've written it. And by ignoring language errors, they perhaps signal more tolerance of error. Civil engineering student. English courses have comments on language, but civil engineering courses did not. They would give feedback like the units, the abbreviations, calculations, etc. And a business student. I think the professor usually expects your language is okay and they just concern about your data or your evidence. They usually do not say too much about language, but of course, if you can write more beautifully, it's better. So as a result, many students see it's okay to make mistakes so long as they state the facts. This is obviously a, 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 a remedy to an obsession with grammar, but it separates language and disciplinary argument. Language courses come to be seen then as a way of polishing up language, making their grammar better, rather than understanding the communicative worlds of academic disciplines. The second theme that uh, I found in the essay, in the interviews was the role of writing in disciplinary communication. Now, becoming literate in a discipline means understanding how meanings are usually expressed. How do people communicate with each other? Some students, though, get the message that their teachers believe writing is less important than producing facts. This psychology student said, for psychology, there are seldom feedback from the lecturers because even if they had any feedback, they would focus on the answer to the question and not the way we have written it. The language is not really right or wrong. And a computer science student, I think for the essays in my computer science major, I did not worry uh, too much because what I've written is related to the technical knowledge and so I can easily do it. I can finish the task by copy and paste. I can write up the assignment without thinking. So they're getting some odd ideas here. So by offering little um, advice on the assignments, subject tutors convey the idea that writing is it's kind of straightforward and its conventions are self-evident. These views were common um, among science students, to be honest, but those studying social and applied uh, subjects got a similar message. The student in social administration, no, no advice on writing. Even if I ask, I think he won't teach me much. I write it out by myself by looking at the previous reports and then put in the content. I believe he doesn't think it's difficult to write. And a business student. No help about how to write. I think we're supposed to know what they want and write like that. But where they're going to get the um, information from, I don't know. So students here get the idea that university writing 
is like the literacies that they bring with them from home. Um, it's just a little bit harder. And this makes it harder for them to see the complex ways in which discourse is situated in the disciplines and how writing is specific to particular disciplines. The third theme um, is the role of writing in learning. Tutors' feedback practices convey messages about the role that writing plays in learning, whether this is learning about content or about the conventions of writing. Now, potentially, feedback can develop both writing and disciplinary knowledge, that this is largely confined to EAP classes, a history student. In the English class, the tutor tried to help us to work on the draft, but then for other courses, not much. Oh, one history course, we can send the professor the draft and then we can discuss with him. But for most courses, they don't ask to give drafts. A biochemistry student. For my English course, we write a first draft and the teacher would give feedback on it. By the time we get to the final draft, I'm usually satisfied with that. But for my biochem course, you just hand in the final version. I'm more apprehensive about it. Ha ha. So the absence of a, of, of a feedback revision cycle seems to encourage a view that students have nothing to learn from their assignments, as these two students mentioned. This one from biology. There's no need to submit a draft. Firstly, the workload will be heavier. Secondly, when we write essay, we only search for some information and then put them in the essay. I think it is more efficient to write it just once. And um, an electrical engineering student, no, not really satisfied with it, haha. Uh, usually it, it is a kind of last minute. I don't really take a lot of time to write it or correct it. So it's not really organized very nicely. So for many students then, the absence of any focus on writing suggests that writing is just a means of assessment rather than a part of, of learning the discipline. And this is made even worse by long delays in returning the paper. A social administration student told me, usually um, there's not any discussion about the essay because it's a final essay. We don't see the professor anymore. We just get it back after the semester. Aha. And business studies, something similar. We hand in the assignment in May and then it's summer holiday. You get a grade at the end. We can get back the essay and look at the grade and that's all. So students feel that the subject tutors see their writing as a final product rather than as an opportunity for instruction. A fourth message that students get uh, from their experience of feedback concerns how it might contribute to learning. Students are used to getting all their errors corrected at secondary school in Hong Kong and believe this is an important part of their learning. A sociology student, they give feedback to improve because writing is important. You just hand in all your words, your ideas in an essay. So it's important for you to know what your weakness is and help you to improve by one essay and another essay. And similarly, politics and economic student, feedback sometimes maybe inspire us to think from another way on, uh, on so that it will be better and it would also improve my skills. The interviews, however, were a bit depressing. They, they, they showed students believe feedback could be more helpful on their subject assignments. Biology student, I think the feedback is so-so. For the lab report, we usually ignore the comments. They're not that useful. And civil engineering, when I got my feedback from my subject teacher, I'm happy that I get a high grade, but also feel confused because I don't know what he likes in my essay and what he dislikes. So it's hard for learners then to see feedback as a learning resource when they don't get it from their subject tutors. They get the idea that feedback has very little value for them. A psychology student, I don't think the teacher has much to tell us in feedback. From the feedback, I can't really think what the teachers want us to learn. 
and chemistry and psychology joint major. Chemistry teachers don't give comments. In psychology, you only get the comments after your grade has come out. The comment may be, this is good, but they don't tell me what I've got done wrong. So getting an assignment back with just a grade can't help students improve their work or improve their subject knowledge. And this implies that their work is an end in itself. It's the final step rather than a means to acquire uh, specialist competence. This is a, an extract from an interview with a chemistry student. What kind of comments do the subject teachers give you? Just give us a grade. Are there any comments at the end? No, only the grade. Yes, that's science. So the message here is the feedback. It's not really important. Finally, embedded in teachers' um, in feedback practices are messages about the teacher-student uh, relationship, how interactions should be conducted. Effective feedback responds to a writer rather than a text, and the students welcome this kind of individual attention. History student. The English teacher said she will spend five minutes for each student to talk about the comments after class. I think this is a good idea and it's a big help to me with the essay. It also helps the teacher to know about my weaknesses and to know about me. The subject teacher doesn't do this. And an English literature student. If the teacher gives you many feedbacks, you will feel very touched that they care about you as a student. I read it, I make corrections and remember it. It's a pleasure for me. So they seem discouraged though by the relationships suggested by many of the practices that I've been talking about in this paper, uh, providing a bare grade, delaying the return of papers, failing to discuss comments. Um, all these things suggest to a student that their teachers believe it's not worth interacting with them. And this was explicit in these comments, this one by a business student. My business tutor just give me one line comment usually and doesn't care. We are too many to care about us. And a biology student. The demonstrators mark the essay. We don't know the professor very well. So students see their teachers as, as busy people and themselves as unimportant to them. And often these feedback uh, practices convey a strong message then that they're, that they're low in their teacher's list of priorities. A physics uh, student, uh, she did say that we can find her if we have problems or questions about marking, but often there's no time and she is in a hurry. I don't feel happy about it. And a sociology student, I sometimes contact them by email, but not about the feedback. Usually they're too busy to talk about the essay. They have research to do. So writing then comes to be seen as an assessment tool and feedback as a way of checking understanding rather than as a, 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 a way of learning and building relationships with students. Okay, so to conclude, um, overall the, the messages here uh, suggest that faculty teachers want students to demonstrate their understanding of the field by writing in disciplinary approved ways. Mainly though, it was only arts and social science teachers who tried to assist this through feedback. Very few uh, of uh, the te teachers mentioned accuracy, but I got the impression that this was taken for granted in writing to learn context. Faculty teachers are more concerned that their students can produce a disciplinary effective argument. But unfortunately, not all of them are prepared to help students develop these skills. It may be that um, AWE, uh, automated, automated Writing Evaluation, programs like PIGAI, which is used in many Chinese uh, universities, might help students overcome this hurdle by improving their, their grammar and allowing them to focus on developing argument skills in their essays. 
the students selves, themselves seem to read this uh, feedback in, in different ways, where feedback is seen as timely, individualized, focused, uh, it conveys encouragement and the importance of writing. They see their tutor is concerned about them. But where it's seen as hasty, uh, delayed, um, and unrelated to their individual needs, these messages are negative and they fail to support students' efforts to master uh, their academic writing practices. I think in the end, you know, it might be, it's an obvious thing to say, um, useful if we talk to our colleagues in the disciplines about these different perspectives, um, to share concerns and to get a better understanding of our students' writing needs. It seems though that for many students, the English teacher is the only hope they have of improving their disciplinary writing. Thanks for your attention and for uh, listening to me. Thanks a lot.